service of iron. Welcome back to Code A. We are in our third best of three. It's going to be Alive versus MC. Another Terran versus Protoss. The first map in this game is going to be Antigua Shipyard, and this is definitely, uh, well, well, probably the most anticipated match today. I would say. MC just start talking to me in chat. <laughs> they're just like they're just saying my name repeatedly. <laughs> I don't even know why. Funny man, but here you can see the creator is facing the winner of this match in the next round, and uh, the winner of this game, of uh, that game, will then advance to Code S. So it's either going to be creator, alive, or MC. All of them really, really strong. Only one can advance, though. And right now, of course, it's a question whether Alive or MC are going to end up in the third round of Code A. They will duke it out here at the GSL. Alive is ready, so is MC. This is going to be a great game, I feel. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Uh, MC, MC actually one of the kings of timing attacks, but he has the late game in him as well. Currently in the round of four of OSL, we'll be playing his match next week, so he's got to prepare for two different matchups, not only for Alive here, but also for Dong Gu. And if he wins this match, he'll also have to play in Code A next week as well. So he's got a stacked amount of games he's got to play right now. Definitely a very tight schedule for the boss toss. Alive, on the other hand, he's not done as well in the individual leagues lately as he really wanted to. He was a little bit disappointed, and then at some point he had a you know, little bit of a head to head with Nest actually, who told him that he thinks that Alive definitely has it in him to be a champion and that he should train a lot more, which he did. So we'll find out if he's able to advance once again in the first round of Kodei. He was able to edge out a win against Protoss lately. He's struggling a little bit apparently, even though it's his best matchup historically speaking. Now we'll find out how he's going to fare against MC and Tiga Shipyard being map number one. The map is about to start. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for this Terran vs. Protoss match at the GSL in the second round of Kodei between Alive and MC. Starting to the left on Antigua Shipyard, our first map is the Terran player for Team Fnatic. He is still... Fnatic alive! Alive and kicking. Yep, if you guys want to follow him on Twitter, his Twitter is Fnatic alive with no spaces. His opponent over here on the right side of the map for the team, SK Gaming. His ID is... SKMC! Just want to do another Twitter plug for this guy. If you want to follow him, you know, do SK double underscore MC. He's got two underscores. Don't be fooled by the boss toss. And if you want to follow us on Twitter as well, you can follow me at ProxyWolf and follow, of course, Calder at simply at Calder with a KH. Do that. Tweet at us. Tweet at these players. I think more people need to be tweeting at Korean Pro Gamers than they already are right now. Hope on Fnatic style. Karn here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, a little bit of Counter-Strike action in the StarCraft 2 studio of the GSL. I like that. Alive currently starting with the gas here. Not going for one barracks in to expand on this map, but starting with the gas. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see what exactly he has in mind against uh, the boss toss. Wow, MC heavily favored in winter production. 72.9%. And whoever wins this match isn't out of the woods yet. They have to play against Creator. That's going to be a really tough task. This group is... I want to say group. It's not really a group. It's, it's a grid. But it's really the strongest. I think the toughest that we have currently in uh, Code A. It's been the best season of Code A the world has ever seen. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, just think about it. You have three players. You have Alive now. Uh, you have... MC and you have Creator, those three have a shot at Code S. Earlier it was also Beyond, but he lost already to Creator. So at this point, one of the three will advance to Code S, the other two will drop into the up and downs. But it's just so crazy if you think about it. All these players are amazing. They've been in Code S before. And uh, 
every single one of them has it in him to be a champion. MCR has already proven it, Alive and Creator still have to do so, if you don't count the WCS Korean qualifier. Alive won, of course, IPL. Yes, IPL, IPL 4. So, yeah, as well as I mentioned, he's champion of IPL 4, yeah. so he's got Mo that win on his back. More relating to uh, the GSL tournaments here, but this is definitely such a stacked group and uh, these players, oh my, just thinking about that two of them will drop out makes me sad. But don't forget, everybody out there, that this is the second round of Kodas. So anyone who loses will have the chance to get into Kodas. So they will be able to fight through the up and down matches. It's basically saying, like, well, they've got the opportunity to like be thrown into a pit of wolves and hope they can fight for survival. But like, you know, they still have a chance. <laughs> a pit of wolves that can just imagine what's happening there. <laughs> Hair discussions all day. That would drive every sane man <laughs> it's insane. It's insane, man. <laughs> They're all really in close proximity to you. Oh, that's just terrible. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to talk about hair anymore. I'm not going to die back. I will stick with my rat hat. Why didn't I beat MC in that round? I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hellion being hidden in the smoke screen. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> secret agent Hellion. That doesn't follow orders from anybody. Now MC is just poking around with his first stalker. Uh, he really wants to be aggressive on the map and see what he can see. He knows he's not going to be able to get into the main base, but wants to stop scouting SCVs and wants to be able to spot, you know, for example, Hellions coming across the map. We have the scouter of the SCV now to, is hiding to the top, uh, to the top right. Whoa. And uh, of course being taken down immediately. Ah, cease the, yeah, cease the expansion. He knows that the expansion is there, that's all that he wanted to do, just confirm that there is an expansion by his opponent. We have now the third gate being ready for MC, and he's of course getting now the robotics. He wants to have the scout out and the opportunity to deal with his opponent's Banshee if there are any, which is not the case in this game. Uh, nice, in the middle of the map, paying attention to his Stalker, not losing it, and of course now also an expansion being built for Alive. Alive is doing this Hellion Drop expand build where you make a reactor as you move out, so he doesn't actually cut unit production so he can get that command center up. Then you attack with Marines and the Hellions at the same time to really throw your opponent off. He's going to keep the Marines near the Hellions so you can actually lift them in as well. And uh -oh. yeah, they are the Hellions in the main base, taking down the first few harvesters immediately. Insane splitting by MC though, really nicely done. Yeah, well done, but there's a lot that he already killed. Really well done by Alive, because look how much damage he does. The force fields are decent, but at the same time, look at the amount of damage oh, wow. that Alive is able to dish out. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. Uh, I think that that amount of damage could not have been rivaled. <laughs> He was able to kill so much there, so many sentries. Ten harvesters killed. This is definitely a huge problem for MC now. Of course, with the original advantage that he had in economy because he was already on two bases, he kind of evens out a little bit, but he's still behind. He's at 25 to 28 harvesters. And now we have a second command center, basically a third coming up for life. This was a very, very nice attack. Yes, uh, and he's also got these nice tech to follow this up with these siege tanks. He knows that against MC, siege tanks are going to be the thing to, to pick because MC loves his force seals. He loves his timing attacks off two bases. You can never be too sure if he's just going to attack you with a bunch of force seals. You got siege tanks, you kind of nullify the sentry. Alive is going to pat himself on the shoulder now, like, okay, so phase one completed. Let's start with the second one. And Absolutely. MC has units everywhere now. He has units in his main base, stalkers, in order to deal with any kind of drop play. At the same time, of course, on the low ground, we also have him with a few units in order to save his mineral line at the expansion. But Alive, ha Alive is calling the shots now. Yeah, he really is. Uh, he's totally dominating here. MC has got total knowledge of what's coming next though. He's seen the third command center, he's seen the siege tank production. Uh, the last thing that he'll see is probably the Raven, because that usually makes the end of the observer. But uh, MC now, how will he respond? Will he at a Twilight Council, or is he going to try to take a third base? Will he do both? He doesn't have any gas that is natural yet. He's still ahead in overall supply. He uses Corona Boost to get ahead in the Harvest account once again. Alive though, now with the Siege Tanks and Siege Mode nearly done, has a quite a decent tech of course. That's the advantage that he really has. And MC is also ahead in this, in, well, in overall in his army supply. The War Prism is a pretty interesting choice here. This is actually going to be a He's going to get a little bit of this. Yeah. Well, I think he's going to do Immortal Drops. He could also drop sentries, but with the immortals he's got on the map, against this type of composition, he can try to pick off siege tanks, pick off depots. There's a, a small marine count, he knows that there's probably not going to be stim. 
uh, because he's gone for this type of composition with no tech labs on his barracks for such a long time. Tech labs are just now being built and we also have the double engineering base so that he can start to sink his gas into upgrades. This is something that MC currently doesn't have. And he doesn't have a third base, but he's moving out with this army that has been spotted by the Hellion. A lot of scouting information for life. This is exactly what he needs. MC is following this up with the robotics bay while moving out. He's actually bunkering up like crazy as you saw this. He's making three bunkers right now, but the concern is actually not going to be the front. It's going to be the back. MC has a lot of different options. He can actually elevate her into the main. That's very rarely done in this matchup, but it could be done. He could also just start to pick off uh, Command Center. For example, those add-ons are pretty vulnerable. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. MC is losing a lot here. Look at those harvesters. They line up. He didn't realize it, and now he's losing a lot more he's harvesters. Losing, no. This Immortals cool. drop on top of the siege tanks here, though. That was really well done. The bunkers are ready, though. Will the Immortals die? I don't think so. Not with the warp prism hovering in the area. Oh, there's a lot of units in the bunkers, though. Alive barely struggling to hold on here. He needs to repair those other bunkers. This is going to get ugly, Wolf. All those bunkers are still there, but MC is just walking past them. He He's walking care. past it. He's got to get past all these SCVs, though. His stalkers are stuck. They can't move. The warping, though, will become a problem, as will these Immortals' beautiful pickups. In the main base, all these units are still ready, but we have a lot of units for life. He just walks up into the base and tries to defend an Immortal is dying, not being picked up by the Warp Prism. It's still warping in units. Alive is at this point down to 18 Harvesters against 40, though. I think it's time to get out. Too late. A lot of resources lost for MC. He lost way more resources than Alive, but the economy is going to be a huge problem. Alive can be pretty happy about his third command center now. This is the one thing that really keeps him in the game. Yeah. Plus, he's got this this ability to now move out, take control of the map. It's 28 armies fly to 13. He knows MC lost laser, so a lot more units there. And yeah, he lost a lot of harvesters, but he can attack now. MC is going to struggle to defend. He's got the economy lead for now. But that's not going to last if this harass really picks up. He's actually just kind of sitting back though, not attacking. He drops. He's starting to drop now with the Medivex. And we have, of course, the superior worker production that we talked about and the additional mule. These are the things that are really important to Alive now. When it comes down to his army, he's still in a good spot. But he really needs to do some damage right now. And that's what he tries to dropping into the smoke screen. And MC has no idea. Yeah, and he's just going to stem and take out these stalkers. Way too much DPS here. Oh, not even a single Marine goes down. Yeah, takes them down, kills a few harvesters as well. Moving in, uh, doing damage here. Really well done. Nice force field. Ah, no pickup. Nope. Probably losing the... Yeah, loses yeah. the medivac as well. Could have gotten out of there, but was a little bit too late. Almost got a pylon, but that was actually a pretty insanely good trade for MC. He lost a few stalkers only, but kept his probes alive and took everything out. Funny as it is, with the mules that Alive has, he is still ahead in mineral mining. Very true. It looks like he is desperately trying to know if MC is going to take a third base. He sends his, his SCV over there. But the main point is that MC, with the attack that he executed earlier, was not only able to get even with Alive, after Alive in the early game did quite a lot of damage to the economy of the Protoss, but he was also able to get a little bit ahead. And you once again see in the overall supply that MC has to be army supply for both of these players is equal. MC's just got this insane army composition right now, though. He's got two Colossi. He's got enough sentries. He's got the Zealots leading the force. Third Colossus pops out now, adding the gateways. I think he really wants to, to end this game now, or at least make sure, 100% sure, that Alive cannot take a third base, cannot land that command center there. Alive, of course, wants to have more Vikings. He doesn't really have a lot of Vikings now, but he needs them against the Colossi. A nice run by. He's going to pick off a Colossus, though. No problem at all. Ah. Yep. And there it is. A great little move here by Alive, being very positional with his army. MC is so awkward right now. He's like, well, what do I do? I guess I have to turn all the way around the map. I've got nothing. On the other hand, Alive will lose every single unit here. The question is, how much damage can he do with them before he's going to die? He's trying to move into the natural right now and stimming over and over again because he knows those units will die. He needs to maximize the damage output. He, he wants to go the Nexus. the Nexus. And he'll get it. Yes, definitely. And it falls. 
We'll probably get a few more units as well if he targets. Targeting down the sentry, the second one survives. But killing this expansion was really important. And now a life sets up Bunkers. He knows at this point MC has to attack. MC has to attack and do damage on his own. The Vikings are ready. Bunkers being built for life. He knows the only chance for MC now is to move in. MC has a decent bank. He can get another round of warp ins as well. He just used one, but he's chrono boosting his gateways, or at least he should be. He's got only one chrono left. And that is uh, a little bit more army supply for MC, but he still has to be careful. The bunkers will be done. He doesn't have blink. He doesn't have. To, he doesn't really have an ability to get into the main. Yeah. There are Vikings to deny him vision of the high ground, plus even a siege tank on the high ground over there. The bunkers are done, but not all of them are actually built. There we go. Uh, I think life is too much, Wolf. Yeah, I think there's maybe checkmate. As MC cannot actually use the range on those bunkers because the Vikings will just go and pick him off. And basically, Alive can't attack MC's army, but he doesn't want to. He just wants to sit here and MC has to go back home yeah. again. Of course, Alive is happy to sit there. He has two bases. He knows that MC has either to do a long distance mine or to just use his or wait for his Nexus. And there's the long distance mining because the mineral patch in the main base, they are nearly completed. There's a drop heading out right now. Alive is just sitting tight, being pretty. And at this point, this is the best thing that he can do. A really big SCB deny on the scout to the north, or rather on the Nexus, excuse me. Uh, you guys can actually get a shot of it, but he used an SCB to block the third base of MC. MC's minerals are getting super high because of this. Then he almost killed the probe that was making it, so he had to send a second probe. Then he killed the SCB with that probe before he even started the Nexus. He still hasn't even started it yet. The drop in the main base, there it is. Marauder drop, and there's not a lot he can do. GG! The job finishes the game, MC is completely out of position, doesn't have a single unit, no warp ins available at this point in time, and Alive takes game number one. Really well played there. I was very impressed with uh, how Alive played the rest of this game. Was always on top of what he what he was up to. His know? decision making was great. Exactly. Always, for example, catching that Colossus in the middle map, seeing that group of units across, that's a tough choice to make. Like you said, He's going to lose every single unit. He has to make those units count. That is a hard choice to make in the heat of the moment. But he was able to do it. Take out a Colossus, take out that Nexus, and really rip the heart out of MC. Yeah, without Medivacs, there was no chance for him to actually get out with those. But he did so much damage with them. He took down the Nexus. He knew that MC was really low in economy. And everything worked well for life. This decision paid off so much. And it saved him the game. The second map now, we are going to start very soon with map number two, it's going to be Cloud Kingdom. Cloud Kingdom, a tough map for Terrans right now. If you can get that fourth base up, it's so difficult for the Terran to engage against Storms, Colossi. Whereas it's fairly easy for the Frost to do that same action to the Terran. So many ranged units, so much long range, so many spells to use. See, it looks a little bit shaking here. Yeah, he really does. Uh, that was a pretty quick GG. You know, most Korean players these days do not GG so early. Uh, and he just, he went for it. He, he still had his army alive, but the drop came in his man. He was like, I give up. I'm done here. It was just the last nail in the coffin. He knew that he could not recover from the losing the Nexus earlier. He tried to try to get into a position. Then the drop hits him with his army not being able to get back in time to prevent the worst. That was really, really tough on MC. But right now, we are heading into game number two. Here we have the two of them once more. Cloud Kingdom, map number two. Terran versus Protoss. And MC, he needs a win if he wants to force game number three. Life, on the other hand, doing everything right in game one so far. Has the lead now in the best of three. Will he be able to claim victory on the second map and advance to the third round of Code to face Greater? Or will MC come back? We are going to find out right now at the GSL Code A. A life up against MC.